What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. Good Sunday afternoon. It's April 17, 2022, about 12.24 p.m. California time. The latest quake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.4 earthquake out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The big island of Hawaii, it looks like. Having a few quakes uh, this morning. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity map here on the USGS side. Showing that, uh, well, it looks like a 2.7 there on the USGS model. Of course, we need to bring down the all magnitudes, right, for the 2.4. A little bit of activity taking place there around the southeast flank of the Big Island. Although this is kind of a downstep in terms of the multitude of quakes compared to the past couple days. So, of course, we did see a, a four-pointer, 4.3 and a 4.6 in this area over the last couple days. Looks like we may be kicking things back up here. Uh, with the most recent activity there in the last hour. We'll see how that uh, see how that plays out. Got to remember we did get uh, an X flare last night. Uh, X 1.1 kicked off. Uh, it did produce a, a pretty massive CME, but not earth directed. Although the uh, flares themselves do have a tendency to affect uh, earth here. Uh, we don't have to have a CME to hit us. The flare itself does provide us with some... Uh, uh, radio blackouts and uh, some other items sh I'm sure uh, looking at the earthquake model though we haven't really seen any major uptick in movement uh, a little bit of activity here around the Tonga region Vanuatu and this little area here near the Loyalty Islands southeast of there anyway uh, I've seen a 5.3 most of this movement occurring uh, last night and early this morning quite a few fives uh, including a 5.8 coming into the region of the Vanuatu area, 199.4 kilometers for that earthquake. So a little bit of uptick, right, in the terms of earthquake activity. No major movement, but uh, definitely a noticeable trend in the uptick of activity worldwide uh, following that flare last night. Quite a few fours out here north of uh, Papua New Guinea. Northwest, I should say. Uh, just offshore, it looks like quite a few fours kicking off. And some movement uh, off the coast of Australia. We've seen this one come in late last night. 4.4. Uh, About 10 kilometers below surface for that earthquake there. So a little, little bit of noticeable or, uh, uptick here along the region uh, surrounding Australia and the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. At least in this section anyway up north here along the mariana trench and the japan trench not a whole lot couple fours pretty quiet though throughout the rest of the region through the north around the uh, Aleutian islands all pretty calm this is the all magnitudes map here too so nothing really to report in the area west coast california some movement here along the southern end of the cascadia from yesterday 2.0 and a little bit of small quakes north of clear lake around the uh, Bartlett Springs fault system here. This is the uh, fault that uh, produced, a, I think, a 5.6, 5.7 uh, a few years back and kind of shook up the Northern California area. Felt that earthquake pretty good outside of Chico here. But uh, today, just a little microquake, 2.1 on that specific fault system. And down here in the uh, Mount Kanaktai area, south of Clear Lake, got the uh, hydrothermal operations going on there with the uh, earthquake activity. Bay Area looks pretty quiet. San Joaquin Valley, not a whole lot going on through there. The creeping section of the San Andreas Fault has uh, slowed down a little bit compared to yesterday. We've seen a little swarm of movement here on this section, that segment of the San Andreas, San Andreas, right? Uh, I gotta slow that down a little bit or else it sounds like I'm saying San Andreas. But trust me, there is a uh, an in there. San Andreas, Ridgecrest. A little bit of activity kicking up here north of the Garlock Fault Zone up here around the mountain areas. Then again, not a whole lot though. I mean, this is just some movement, but uh, not we're not looking at any major swarms. No, no increased seismic activity out here along the west coast. Maybe a, what do we got here? I don't, I don't even know if I'd call that a little swarm. Just a couple earthquakes there outside of uh, uh, what is it? Anza area. Looks like west northwest of there of this town. That's it looks like about the closest town to this area. Pretty small microquakes, but down there about eight kilometers or so uh, below the surface. 
Rest of the country looking pretty uh, absent of movement. A uh, little bit of activity here. This is kind of odd here. Seen three earthquakes south of San Antonio. Um, 3.2 looks to be the largest in this little sequence of quakes. I want to find out, see what's out there. I, I can only guess. I can only guess out there when I'm flying over that region at 30,000 feet. All the oil and gas wells out here in the state of Texas. And there's a lot of them. Look at all those. I'm sure uh, <laughs> these are pretty much within feet of each other. These are all um, these pumping operations here. Injection well um, operations from from the whole procedure. I'm not going to go into how it goes on, but uh, these quakes are definitely contributed and related related to the uh, operations going on there in Texas in that area. Terrain. Let's go back here to the terrain view. Eastern part of the country. Not not showing anything actually. New Madrid zone looks quiet. One or two earthquakes up here in the gas and oil fields of Oklahoma. And a couple spotty quakes throughout Montana and Wyoming. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview. See if we got anything cooking up here on the uh, super volcano. Not a whole lot. Zip zero. Nada. No quakes really to report. No swarms. No magma movement. No doom and gloom today from Yellowstone super volcano. Uh, let's see. Let me check out the rest of the map here. Puerto Rico did see some activity. Uh, kind of, let's see, let's bring up the all magnitudes here. A little bit of activity up around the Puerto Rico Trench. And of course, the southwest, re uh, southwest region of Puerto Rico still seeing that little swarm that uh, has been ongoing for oh, a number of years now. Uh, let's see. One earthquake down here towards the Gulf of California. Just south of there, it looks like. Baja, California, 4.0 off the coast of Mexico, 10 kilometers. And uh, aside from that, wow, not a whole lot, uh, not a major amount of activity, I should say. There's definitely activity occurring, but not a major amount as far as like any large scale movement goes. So the trimmer map looks as though <clears throat> it's running. Let's see, that's from the 15th. Here's, this here is the Cascadia Subduction Zone trimmer. The 16th doesn't show anything. The 17th, I can't even access the 17th right now, so I'm not for sure what's going on with it. They're definitely doing some type of work on it. I know they have been uh, adding the trimmer activity on late, uh, days late at that, sometimes a week late. So we'll see if they get this thing fixed. Maybe somebody's uh, you know upgrading the system, we'll, we'll see. Uh, solar weather activity has been kind of uh, amplified, right, from the X flare last night. Current solar flare detection chart here over last minute data, one minute data. There's the X 1.1 last night. It has since died down a little bit. We've seen a couple C flares crackling here. Looks like it's getting ready to produce a uh, uh, at least another M flare with these crackling and popping, so to speak. You know, it's kind of like popcorn when you hear it sizzling. Uh, in the microwave or on a pan, however you cook it, you know, it's it's getting that hot sizzling sound uh, and then all of a sudden pop, right? So you start hearing it pop. It kind of kind of reminds me of that. So that's from the uh, Sunspot, uh, former Sunspot 2975, right? So this is the old Sunspot that produced an X flare a couple weeks ago for us. Well, it rounded the bend, it rounded the uh, sun, coming back into the Earth view. And it has been renamed 2994. But you got to remember that 2975 is its former self. And it's not going out without a bang, apparently. Uh, looking at the chart here, I wish we could get a better view of this. But man, that, that is a massive, huge sunspot. And just by looking at it a little bit, the, the dynamics of it look pretty uh, enhanced for for definitely some M flares and possibly some more X flares over here uh, from this giant sunspot. I mean, it almost looks like just one, but uh, these guys are showing two. The old one, 2975, which is now this one, and then uh, this 2993 uh, developing into just a, a giant sunspot with uh, quite a bit of possibilities here in the coming days for producing more X flares. Uh, here's a little bit, little bit better view of it. 
But uh, we'll see as this thing comes into view and uh, see if it wants to provide us with something spectacular in terms of any upper X flares. We'll see, uh, see how that does. It looks like these guys are getting on with the ball today, right? They only had this at, a, I think, 10% chance last night, and I kind of mentioned that uh, that's a little bit on the low side. I think we need to up that up a little bit, and it looks like they may have, um, well, probably didn't take my words, but they probably uh, looked into it and thought, well, yeah, we probably should raise this up. This thing's producing an X-flare, so 25% chance of an X-flare. Um, M-flare at 75% chance, uh, C-flare at 99% chance. I think these are pretty reasonable for now. Uh, until we get a better view of the dynamics of the uh, magnetic fields in the sunspot itself, in the sunspots, in that giant uh, region uh, in the coming days. So, uh, like I said, right now, though, it is crackling with some upper C flares and possibly getting ready to pop some more popcorn here for the show and produce us another M or maybe even an X flare. So we'll see. And produce that, uh, the, uh, the energy there that... Uh, I don't know. I've, I've been kind of. I'm kind of a big fan of solar weather in terms of activity. You know, I love the sun. I love being outside. But I like the sunspot activity. When we're very low, there's not a whole lot go, that goes on on the sun, as far as flaring goes. And I, I just like the activity. I think it plays a major part on uh, what goes on here on Earth. The energies here on Earth. I think it plays a part in earthquake activity as well, uh, volcanic activity. Uh, and just in general, how it affects life here on Earth, the weather, us. Um, believe it or not, I think I think it does. I think the sun plays a major part in all of that. Uh, let's see here. So right now, the geomagnetic field looks pretty uh, mellow, not completely down there. It looks like about three on the KP index, <clears throat> and. Um, a little bit of storming over the next couple nights it looks like uh, at least a g3 to g4 storm and that's currently in that threshold so look for that at the higher latitudes only a 40 percent chance there for the folks way up there um but yeah we'll uh, keep watching this pretty closely folks these little charts here uh, i think what i'm going to do for the live stream i'm going to flip this over here to the uh, space weather prediction center chart this uh i don't know if yeah i'll show the one we could do, uh, trying to think, one one day data. That might be kind of cool. Or should we just keep it at the three day? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Either way, I'm going to swap this out with the Aurora Oval, on which is on the live stream right now. I'm going to uh, flip it over to this chart so we can keep an eye on the X solar flare activity. Because if it's producing a CME... I said the flare produces a CME. Uh, it's going to take a, a couple days to get here. Uh, so this wouldn't even really matter on the Aurora Oval that I have up here on the left-hand corner. Um, so I think right now with all the flaring activity, I'm going to swap it over to the uh, solar ray, solar uh, flare monitoring chart there from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Uh, .noaa.gov is their website. If you want to check that out yourself, but uh, we will be popping that up here on the live stream. All right, guys, um, I'm going to jump off here. Hope everyone enjoys their day. <clears throat> Happy Easter out there. 30, uh, 75 degrees today here in California. Uh, and then we cool back down tomorrow with some more chances of rain. So I'm, I'm just pretty thankful that we got some r more rain chances coming up here in the uh, California region because we're pretty dry. We've had a pretty dry winter, and that's not good. Going to keep us in that extreme drought category, which is not not cool, man. All right, guys, have a good day and uh, stay safe out there.